Good morning. I um, today is May second, uh, twenty so May second, twenty twenty three. Um, just outside, I'm actually out here to pick some peas. We've been growing all summer long. I have a cat. <laughs> he just showed up. Um, anyway, I'm out here to pick some peas because Mom and I, I think, are going to shell some peas today. Been growing them all summer. We might only get one one batch out of them, but hey, we might only get one batch out of them, but that's okay. Uh, we'll just cook them down and mom's going to make some shepherd's pie and then we'll have some shelled peas for dinner for fresh from the garden today. Um, if we have enough and extra, the plan is that we're going to go ahead and blanch them and put them in the freezer so we have some frozen peas that we can throw into dishes in the future, maybe some fried rice and different things. <clears throat> so anyway, I haven't updated you much. We've been working very hard on the wedding, uh, having, you know, juggling that with our full-time jobs and and the temperature fluctuations, it's kind of odd. It's actually pretty cool out today. Um, I started out with a t-shirt and a sweater and I decided I needed a, a hoodie that uh, would be a little more comfortable. Um, so it is pretty chilly. Uh, it's a little breezy out. Um, but everything's looking really good in the garden. I was hoping to just give a brief update on some of the things we've been doing, taking out um, all the winter crops as we can harvest. We've been harvesting and then uh, we've been throwing a lot of them to the chickens because at this time of the year the the brassicas the the cabbage the cauliflower the broccoli um, things of that sort they tend to get um, a type of bug on them i think they're called thrips anyway they uh, they're kind of like a gray powdery um, stuff uh, residue that that starts to form on the on the tips and then you know that they're gone um, so anyway, I'm just gonna kind of walk you through and show you some of the stuff we've got going on in the garden. So let me flip this around. So right now that's just the field. It's a beautiful, beautiful um, view of the field. This is currently the new seating sitting area that we've got going. Eric had put these benches out. He had made these benches out of some redwood stumps and uh, just a board that he had. So uh, it's kind of just a natural look. Got some tomatoes that we've planted. They all seem to be doing well. I had put some seedlings in. I actually think these might be weeds coming up, but these, these might be the seedlings here though. So we've got some, some seedlings coming up maybe, hopefully. Um, I put holes in the, uh, let's see. I put, I put some holes in the soil in the beds and then I put some potting soil and some loose potting soil so that hopefully those seeds will germinate better in the soft soil so that's what I did there I'm gonna flip it back um, some more tomatoes and some more um, seeds this is really cool I wanted to show you this we think this is balsam here I know these are terrible weeds over here um, they're really lush and green because we've had such a wet spring but anyway this one here it says it's spotted bee balm 
If you know plants, you know this is not spotted bee balm. I have no idea what it is. We think it's balsam. We do think it's balsam. Um, it was in the seed packet, I believe, with this one. It doesn't match any of the other seeds that I got. Um, but it's beautiful. So we're just letting it grow. It's got these really, really interesting... Oh, and it looks like they're getting aphids on them, darn it. Um, so anyway, uh, it, it's growing here, and we're just going to let it go. And if it can go to seed, then we'll save the seeds. But I think it might be... It might be one of the ones from a, a seed packet that I got. And um, I think it might be a like a seed packet that I got that had some, you know, maybe the seed sorter or whatever had a couple of leftover seeds that should have been um, cleared out and they weren't. And so that's fine. We got some surprise seeds, which was actually really fun. Um, so, and they're really pretty. So that's, I'm excited to have those. So I'm going to flip. We, in this bed here... Um, we're still working on irrigation over here. Eric's got a, a project, and we've got so many projects going, it kind of sits while we work on it. Um, this bed here has got some sunflowers that we've planted. Um, this might actually, right here, be my first sunflower. I think it is. It's called a strawberry blonde sunflower. I got the seeds through Johnny's Seed. Um, and I actually think it's going to do do well here so that'd be awesome if that's what that is it's a uh, really pretty color I have some snail eaten uh, starts back in here this one that one um, there's one over there the poor little thing anyway and there's and there's Frankie hey Frank what's up um, so anyway I went ahead and put those in but the snails had gotten to them in the seedling trays because I had them down on the ground um, these right here one two three uh, these are my watermelon mounds. I've got three different kinds. One's going to be an orange watermelon, and then the other ones are going to be a red flesh watermelon. I've got my dill is just flourishing over here. I'm not sure how much longer it'll go there, uh, but that's there. And I did put in some okra seeds, but we've been so cool. I, oh, there's my first okra. Look at that right there. That is my first okra. And it looks like I've got one there now coming up. So this is super exciting another one there so we've got some seeds and then this must be i don't think that's a nasturtium we'll see but i did put in some nasturtium seeds so maybe that's a nasturtium i'm not sure anyway these are our wild berries along the back here um, it's kind of scary how close they are to my planter boxes um, they do try to pop up in the planter boxes at times and, but they, this is where we get our blackberries from. And they kind of grow wild along here underneath these eucalyptus trees, which I've talked about in other videos that I've filmed. I haven't posted anything yet, but uh, the eucalyptus slows down. So the eucalyptus slows down the um, decomposition of the material out here. And so one of the things that we're learning as we've been doing this is that we're gonna have to heavily um, get uh, fertilize and give nutrients to these back beds that are right underneath the uh, eucalyptus tree because there's always leaf dropping and material from that. We we haul away the big debris. We try to get rid of the leaves out of the flower beds and stuff or the plant beds, but unfortunately um, there is some that just ends up there and it decomposes. Uh, slowly and I guess the oils in it actually slow the decomposition they still can be composted but they do slow it down considerably so that's something we're work contending with but we're learning to work with it anyway that's the berries and then we have some wild stuff over here in this corner this is getting really wild we've had such a wet uh, wet winter that this everything is just flourishing it's wonderful so um, oh and there's the cats playing over there there pouncing on each other and having fun. Um, I've got some fennel. It's kind of getting close to the end of its life. I might be able to harvest that bulb there. I haven't done much with fennel. I've got to find something to do with it. I wanted to grow it and see what it tasted like and kind of has a an oniony flavor, I think, with, you know, a, a touch of licorice. I've got a whole bunch of basils there, seedlings, um, and a couple flowers there. I've got tomatillos, uh, these two on the end here. Um, these two right here are tomatillos. I gotta get those going and you have to have more than one in order for them to actually fruit because they pollinate each other and they won't fruit if there's only one of them. So this one has some other basils in it. 
Um, I planted some peppers and basils here. I've got the end of some sugar peas there, or not sugar peas, um, snow peas there. So I've got to harvest those. Some of them are getting pretty thick, um, maybe a little bit rough. These have been really cool. These are called King Tut's Purple Peas, and I think I had maybe shown some flowers on them, but this is what they're doing in the sunlight. They're beautiful. But then they've got some of these too. So I think they're just, um, now that we put up the shade cloth, they're not going purple as fast, maybe. Um, anyway, and then we have snow peas, or uh, sweet peas over here, and they smell amazing. It looks like we've got red, purple, and uh, pink. Those are more like true colors, and those seeds were actually um, seeds that I had saved from last year's sweet peas. We had a little bit more variety in color, so those kind of went back to their true because it was a, a hybrid, I'm pretty sure. These yellow things in the front here, these are um, broccolini. They were kind of purple, and then they start to do this, and then they eventually um, turn into flowers like this. And then, like I said, they start to get gray. I'm, I'm wondering if there's any of that stuff on them that they get. Oh, maybe, maybe, oh, here we go. So this has kind of a, a gray powdery look to it. This is starting to get this. So this one can come out today and I can give this to the chickens. Um, they'll love it. They eat the bugs and the flowers and everything. Um, there's our asparagus across there. It's all, we finally let it go to fern. So we've been eating on it for a few weeks. These are some of my onions. They're starting to go to seed, so I need to get them out of the ground. They didn't bulb up like I wanted to, but I recently heard that adding phosphorus may help with that. So, And then our, we got some more compost that needs to be spread out here. We've got some carrots here. Some of them are pretty woody. I don't know that we're going to get a real great crop this year. It wasn't necessarily the best year for that. And there's my cat standing in... Hi. So that's some strawberries. I decided to commit that bed to strawberries. We'll see if the gophers stay out of it because it doesn't have proper wiring underneath. So the gophers may, may get into it and eat most of what's there. But all that lettuce in there, I'm hoping to get some salad out of that. I've got two more heads of lettuce over in the far bed over there. I've got one there. I've got one on the far end. I don't know if you can see that big green ball at the far end of that one in the way distance. So those two are going to be another salad for us. Um, I've got some more zinnias there that need to go um, in the ground. And they're recovering from snail damage. And then I've got lots of tomatoes on that green strip across there as the tomatoes peeking out on the other side. Um, and then I've got some more. Uh, these are sugar peas. Um, and then those are sugar peas. And then that really big... Uh, all of this is all sugar peas up on the fencing. And so I'm going to be harvesting today. And we also have brought, uh, some cauliflower um, that's going to need to be used up. That's supposed to be like a green cauliflower. I think it's called Maserata. And then these are some new beds over here. Um, these are my newest addition to my garden. Eric put down uh, this paper. We had this cardboard paper that we had used for, I believe it was the flooring in the house when we were uh, in the apartment when we were building the apartment. And he had had it for a long time and he needed something to put down that helps control the weeds. So he put that down and then you can see he barked in between on the pathways and then he put down soil. And then he's trying this new drip system to see if that'll work. So my plan is on that bed over there to put more tomatoes more tomatoes in this bed here and then in the middle to do some squash on either ends and then some okra a small stand of okra in the middle so that's the plan and um, then over here i planted as many cucumber seeds as i possibly could you can see we're getting some some chewing bug damage on these um, if they can push through this early stage we should be good um, but they are struggling some of these these took forever. These are silver slicers and they took forever to come up. These are alphabite. They came up pretty fast. And then I also have China Jade. I think I have munchers. I'm sorry. I think I have munchers. And then I have I, somewhere in here there's the China Jade cucumbers um, that start coming up. I'm hopeful that I can start to tell the difference between them a little bit based on the leaves uh, as they go. And then over on the far end, this is something called um, Mideast Peace Cucumber. They're supposed to be good for slicing and for pickling, so I'm super excited. And those are a locally grown um, from a local seed company, so I'm excited to see. And they were the first ones to come up, so 
that's exciting. Um, in the back, and I'll have to go around and show you the front because it's so beautiful, and I wish you could smell these. But that that kind of uh, peachy orange pink um, bush behind there, that's covered in flowers. That's called a pink lemonade honeysuckle. We'll go look at that in a minute. Um, over here on this side of this bed here, I've got some green beans across here. I'm hoping those will take off and give us a little bit of a crop. And they're under the 70% shade cloth, which is a little bit heavier. And so I was hoping that I could extend their season a little bit. Otherwise, it's going to get too hot and we won't get a lot of green beans. And then in the back, I put some pepper, oh, peppers along in there. And then these are some peppers that still need to be planted um, all in here. Some of them are doing better than others. And then these are some eggplant right here. These are all my eggplants that I've grown. They got a little bit of snail damage. Again, we are having so many snails. And then over here, I have some more green beans that I planted. And I was hoping... There were a couple here on the corner, but I've had some uh, gopher damage in here. So this bed probably needs to be dug up and replanted or uh, get some uh, hardware cloth on the bottom. And then uh, hopefully the gophers can't get into it. This bed is going to look the same. All of these beds, these three beds, this, this one here, that one, and that one, all three of these here are going to have, um, let's see are going to have tomatoes on one side and um, so we'll put tomatoes on one side and then on the other side so there's usually there's a little bit of a narrow side on the side these will be the tomatoes and then on this side I'll do peppers and then I was hoping to do bean seeds along in here and then come in with either follow in with flowers or some basil or some kind of seed in there that can can grow in there over the summer uh, once the beans are spent because the bush beans do get spent at some point um, over here this radish has all gone to seed I don't think I'm gonna get actually true radishes I planted like a red meat uh, radish and I planted a black uh, Spanish radish um, so we're gonna have to just try again in the fall when it's a little cooler oh, this one's trying to go to flower um, so we'll get that out of there it'll still taste good we'll eat it um, Let's see what else have we got. We had some more cauliflower here. Another head of cauliflower there. So we'll just pull all of that off. So that might be part of dinner tonight as well. Just so we can get that out of the garden and actually get some of this out of it. Um, so looking back on what we've already seen, we're now behind the asparagus. And then I'm going to come over here. And over here, this is what I'm saying about these berries are getting scary. Uh, invasive so that's going to have to be cleaned out and it's along in there and then we have i think this is some kind of a wild grape i'm not exactly sure uh, i haven't seen it flower but it seems like it should and then this right here is a um, tarragon this bed is full of weeds uh, i'll tell you about that another time but we use some chicken compost where they've been kicking their well i won't i'll tell you about it now <laughs> they've been chicken kicking their um oats and wheat seeds and barley seeds into their the surrounding um, bedding that it falls out from underneath their chicken coop and we grab some from underneath there not realizing that all you have to do is put water on it and now you have lots of cover crop there <laughs> that I didn't intend so I've been doing a little bit of weeding in these raised beds it's been a little frustrating but you live and learn um, these are the potatoes I planted with Elijah a few months ago a couple months ago I guess and those are also potatoes there's four different varieties here um, and these are the red potatoes these will be ready first and they I had the most of those so I put them in the biggest one and it looks like something's been chewing on them as well you can kind of see there's a little bit of damage but um, all in all those are strong looking plants they're gonna pull through that or push through that and they, they should have pretty good uh, potatoes on them. and then this lovely oh there's a, a, a dog that is pointing the cat and see him shaking how he quivers he just gets so excited he can't help it <laughs> anyway trooper that is so painful to watch um anyway we also have these right here these are our fig tree and these are some of our lovely figs and they're already forming they're actually getting pretty big um, which means if they're already getting like this we're gonna have a bumper crop of figs i mean they are just getting huge so anyway, and then I planted some more cucumbers over here. There we go, 
along in here. And again, we have the weed seed coming up because we decided to amend the soil with some of the chicken goodness. And that's what we got. This is a volunteer. I'm not sure what this is. We're going to just let it go and let it ride and see what happens. So um, this is an out of control um, time. We're going to probably um, cut it back a little bit so we can get this walkway. Um, we're going to be barking all the walkways in here. Uh, very soon, maybe after the wedding, though. I don't know that we can get it done before the wedding because we're so busy. But <clears throat> this is thyme, and there's this little spot here that I tried to grow cucumbers in that was about three times that wide, and the, the thyme has grown this way. So I'm giving up this space because it doesn't have good water access here, for, and for some reason the cucumbers didn't do well. And then I'm thinking about we're going to try to pull this plant over and push it that way so it will grow that direction. And then down here we have um, an area that needs to be weeded obviously and then we're going to go ahead and put in i was thinking about loofahs i hadn't i had thought maybe a melon that would climb but i'm now thinking i might do some loofah seeds like two two or three loofah seeds there um there's luna hi luna how you doing yeah you're always so happy when you get talked to um and then kind of looking back on this <clears throat> this flower bed here has um some some new things that I put in I put that and that to kind of fill these spaces that didn't have much in them and then there is this gazania that I keep talking about and it looks like I'm gonna get a poppy I think I've got a poppy going here and this was I think supposed to be a specialty poppy so this isn't your golden poppy this I think is actually a um, either a gray one or a pink one I'm not sure so anyway, oh, and there's some small bit of tomatoes. Most of those tomato varieties are going to go into these beds. So that's why they're over here. And then the ones on the other side over there were the ones that are going to go on that side. So there's a couple here that are probably going to either be up potted and given away. I've got some family members and uh, that have asked for some tomatoes uh, plants. So, And as you can see, this is why I need to come out and harvest today because we have a lot of peas. Like this one's getting pretty fat. That one probably needs to be uh, shelled. That one needs to be shelled. That one needs to be shelled. We've just been coming out and snacking on them, but there, it's time to actually get a harvest out of them. So, and then our roses. Actually, let me come over here, and I'll show you our rose bush here. Look at these roses. Are they not the most beautiful? They look, again, I love things that look painted. Um... Eric also put these in for me. These have been really fun. I don't know what they're called, but they've been really beautiful and fun to watch grow. Um, there's some more of them. That one's really just beautiful. And everything smells sweet and candy-like out here because it is the springtime. There's a yellow rose bush. This is really taking off this year. This is more of a pale color than I've seen it before, but anyway, it's doing... It's, usually pretty bright but they're beautiful <clears throat> and then the tulips are pretty spent i've got to come out i deadheaded them a little bit ago you deadhead them again and then they're kind of dying back like this that's just what they're doing they fed their roots and they'll come back again next spring and it'll be beautiful again but for now that's what it is um we also have this is a fig tree that was seeded by a bird or something anyway we've got it growing in this pot with some calendula and the calendula actually has been blooming this is a fun color of calendula it's not a true orange it's more of a peachy color this bloom's been going for about a week now so it's probably going to be spent before long and then here we are so this right here eric did some pretty heavy chemical treatment um we haven't done as much since i asked him to stop doing that to my garden um that i was eating out of but anyway this he, this area he had treated for weeds because it's just it's the gravel you know and we know it's going to be gravel because it's at, actually an area where we're going to be bringing trucks in if we need to and we can back a truck or a trailer or anything and, and then it goes through the fence to the backyard and so it just was an area that we needed to have access to so we wanted to get the weeds down so this here got hit really hard with it though. And I kid you not, it was all curling, like really bad. Like the, it, this is not even close to anything. 
and we heavily amended the soil and did a lot and look at this it is actually coming out of it this year we have some beautiful blue uh, buds we're gonna have some beautiful buds getting going and this one's kind of a pink color this right here is a red bud tree that was growing in the fence over there we've got two more that are growing in the fence you can kind of see the tops of them right there um, so we Elijah and I dug this one out so we could put the potatoes in and uh, so that's doing well it it took to the transplant I'm really glad so we're gonna have another red bud tree we can put somewhere when it really gets established roots this is the lemonade honeysuckle and this thing is so much fun I absolutely love it and it's covered this year we're having like a super bloom and they smell so sweet very very sweet flower sweet smelling flower so and then this is the back side of the cukes the new beds for tomatoes and squash and okra and tomatoes that I said coming over here we've got some garlic all of this grassy um, spiky looking stuff is um, is gonna be your garlic we've got some tomatoes in here that have taken well to their transplants they're really their stems are really starting to thicken up they're doing wonderful and then of course I've got all of these tomatoes down here that are loving the cooler weather um, because they're ready to be up potted and I just haven't had a chance so we got to get them in pots today would be nice um, this is a giant honeysuckle that Eric has been growing he's been trying to grow honeysuckle on the posts that hold up the shade cloth frame we just put up this shade cloth this is 50% shade cloth and boy has it made a difference everything has really greened up and is super happy um, I think it's gonna really help our crops this year that's that head of lettuce I said I'm gonna pull out today um, there's some carrots so those are some carrots that I'm actually surprised are growing um, and then these are some onions and I'm going to show you all of this had onions this thick all the way down to here and so you ask what happened here I have been feeding gophers for the entire spring season and I'm kind of over it so this bed has to be before it gets planted with our tomatoes that we want to put in here we are going to have to take all the soil out of this whole bed and I think it's like 18 feet long and we're gonna have to uh, put some hardware cloth over it to keep the gophers out of it. The reason why they didn't go in this one, I believe, is this one was given hardware cloth at the beginning. Um, I also have this really cool carrot that came back from last year. It obviously was one we missed, and it sprouted. And it is now, we let it go to seed. We have not ever done this before with carrots, but look at that beautiful flower. And it is covered, and it hasn't even opened yet. I'm excited to see it open. But that, I mean, it's covered in those big blooms all over. So this thing might be really showy and beautiful. I've never had carrots go to seed. And lastly, in the garden tour here of the vegetable garden, this is a rose bush. It's called a, I want to say it was the St. Patrick's Day um, rose bush. And Juliet, look at the, look at the rootstock on this thing. I mean, it's like huge. And apparently, so fun story, so fun story about this, um, Juliet found, uh, she saw on Facebook an advertisement for somebody saying, hey, do you want these free rose bushes? I've got a couple of them, you know, come get them. If you want them, make arrangements with me. And she watched and watched and, and she said, you know, this is the last day I'm going to have them on there. And so if nobody comes and gets them before that, I'm going to get rid of them. So she asked me, she says, have you ever thought about getting a St. Patrick's Day rose? I'm like, what is it? It's kind of a greenish yellow rose, supposedly. So I was like, sure, I'll give it a roll. So she went and picked this up and left it in her car for three days. I love you, Juliet. If you watch this video, I'm sorry. I'm ratting you out. But she left it in her car for three days. This thing came so wilty. Like it kind of looked like this when it first showed up. And it was all like clustered around this base here but all of this has come in like just like like literally i don't know like two weeks time so it's absolutely gorgeous so you got to look at this again so this whole entire plant has grown in like two weeks time it's really amazing and i think we're going to get some really cool roses on it it might be a climbing rose that we're going to have to put on some kind of a trellis 
and it might be one of those ones that gets really big and out of control i don't know but it's happy here it seems to be doing well in the in the container so we're going to keep it there um and then over here again we have another fig tree that's going um that was a fig start that eric started and then this is another um apricot tree i want to say and then that's another one of those honeysuckles that's over there on the post way down there that big huge thing there so there's just a lot there and then right now this field is just as green as can be and uh so anyway that's what we're looking at and again lots of irrigation stuff um just a lot of stuff we've got some strawberries not all the strawberries that elijah and i planted are coming out but you can see that some of them did take so we're going to get a few strawberries in here and i'll probably fill in with some flowers and herbs in these other containers um, it was just an experiment and fun and we'll see how it goes but anyway so that's the garden tour there um, i'm going to just go ahead and grab a container and start pulling some sweet peas or sugar peas <laughs> to show you this is what we're picking and it is uh, sugar peas I think is what they're called so you peel them off and then inside there is this whoop, this one's not opening up very well inside there are these beautiful peas oh my gosh oh my gosh look at those so inside there's those and so that's what mom and I are going to uh, be shelling today and that is a pea, and we're gonna make a pot of peas for dinner. So anyway, they're a nice little sweet treat in the garden too, fresh. I like to pop them open and snack on them while I'm picking them. So anyway, I hope you have a sweet day, as sweet as mine. And until next time, take care.
So I just want to show you that I'm, I just bought myself a t-shirt. I got it from um, Jess Sowards at uh, Roots and Refuge. I don't have it yet. But um, anyway, real food comes dirty. That's what uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the um, this is a snail. That's what the t-shirt says. And this is why is because I have a lot of cleanup to do when I take this basket of food in. I will probably soak it in some salt water, rinse it off really good, and then hope for the best. So that I don't end up with one of these in my frying pan or my, or my steamer. So anyway, that was uh, just a fun little tidbit I wanted to share.